Hi, welcome to FT Insights. I'm Mike Fibus. You know, patience for wearable data in the healthcare community has really been wearing thin lately. Practitioners are accustomed to devices that meet strict regulatory standards. And they consider fitness trackers and smartwatches to be toys. And more and more of them are just rejecting outright the mounds of wearable data that patients present to them. This is a big issue for the healthcare community and one that we follow closely at Fibus Tech. If wearables are ever going to be considered healthcare devices, then they've just got to adhere to those same standards. Today, I'm privileged to have with me Amnon Blanca. He's the vice president for Cardiac Sense. It's interesting, the Israeli startup started out by making a, a consumer device, but they soon realized that what they were onto with their technology and refocused on healthcare. So Amnon, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Mike. <clears throat> So catch us up. Tell us a little bit about Cardiac Sense and your technology and what it's capable of. Okay. Uh, as you mentioned, we started out in the consumer arena uh, where we find a lot of competition uh, solutions that are good enough, good enough for day-to-day uh, -day activity, uh, not being accurate enough for uh, medical uh, applications. And there are a lot of competitors in the market. The market is huge. Uh, we find out after uh, establishing uh, and getting to a real uh, good technology that uh, our accuracy levels are very high and can, we can leverage this advantage to the medical arena. And therefore, we refocused on the medical arena about two years ago. And since then, we are uh, focusing on two big issues. One is uh, heart arrhythmia detection, and the other one is uh, blood pressure measurement. Uh, for heart arrhythmia detection, we, did, we performed two clinical trials, a successful one with the sensitivity over 99%, uh, and they were very successful. This is uh, the first step towards uh, getting FDA regulatory approval. And with blood pressure, we are capable today uh, of measuring uh, blood pressure continuously and cuffless. Uh, as you know, all solutions in the market today are based on cuff technology. Uh, we are pretty close to uh, FDA uh, accuracy level in blood pressure measurement. Uh, you should bear in mind that uh, currently uh, there is a need for a calibration process, very short calibration process versus cuff device. And then you can do without uh, calibration for about six months. Again, this is a huge step uh, towards a better solution, a comfortable solution, People can be measured 24 seven for blood pressure. They can be monitored 24 seven for heart arrhythmias. And this is, uh, as I call it, uh, the uh, era of consume medical. It's consumer and medical. Uh, they're overlapping. This is a very interesting era now where medical and consumer devices are go leaning toward uh, other, each other. And uh, te actually medical technology is going uh, towards consumer uh, arena and consumers want more uh, out of their devices. They're going with the watch. Uh, so we developed a medical watch uh, that uh, allow all this. And uh, hopefully this is a new uh, uh, revolution in uh, personal health. The doctor will be able to get in real time uh, your data if it's a uh, heart arrhythmia and, and your uh, hypertension level. Uh, so two very exciting big breakthroughs and, <clears throat> and a far cry from where we are today with wearables. So it's interesting, the medical, the medical watch or the consumer, and I forgot your term already, but uh, it's interesting that the consumer medical watch that you've produced and are now beginning to take through the regulatory process also has uh, ECG contacts, yes? Yes, absolutely. 
So we, if you're as accurate, uh, tell me why you need, would need those. That's a very good question. Uh, we, through the clinical trials, we've proven already that we are accurate as ECG. But uh, we bear in mind that this is a true revolution for the uh, medical community, especially for the cardiologists and the electrophysiologists. Their holy Bible is the ECG signal. They're used to working with it for more than 100 years, and uh, this is uh, their uh, golden standard. Once you uh, introduce them to a new technology that there's n it's, they're not used to, uh, it will be much easier to, for them to embrace if you show them real-time ECG uh, with our PPG signal, which is new to them. So basically a person will uh, live his day-to-day -day life, ordinary life, once the watch will alert that there is an heart arrhythmia, the patient will need to put his other hand finger on the band and there is an ECG pad over there and he will get real-time ECG as long as he put his finger on the band. So the doctor will get ECG and PPG together. And we believe it will be easier for the community, medical community, to embrace this solution this way. Interesting. So more of a comfort factor than a technology advantage. Is there anything that the ECG buys you that you can't do with the PPG or do you expect to lose that one day once doctors are comfortable? Uh, no. For, first uh, reason for having ECG is what I mentioned for the community to embrace this much easier. We have also a technological edge with the ECG uh, today, we measure blood pressure with PPG only. There is a, another way to measure blood pressure, which is a combination of PPG and ECG. And the, the better uh, result taken from both uh, ways to measure will be introduced finally. So we predict that ECG and PPG together eventually will bring better uh, accuracy levels in our blood pressure measurement. Okay, interesting. So tell us, what is your secret sauce? How are you able to get ECG accuracy out of PPG? No one else is even close. Okay, so PPG uh, technology has one huge Achilles heel, which is movement. Once you have a watch on your uh, wrist, you tend to move your hand a lot. And mis uh, other technology, other PPG sensor mistakenly read this movement as pulse or heart rate. We have uh, our own IP on uh, something we call artifact sensor that can eliminate all movement artifacts. Therefore, leaving us with the measurement only while uh, there is no movement and therefore no false alarms. Okay, interesting. Do, are you thinking that you might take that into the consumer market one day? Or is that far off? <laughs> That's, that for now, it's far off. Uh, our first and major priority is to go to the medical arena. There are a lot of solutions in the consumer market. We believe, and that's a bonus in the medical arena, that you actually can save lives. People with heart arrhythmias, for instance, atrial fibrillation, which the most common heart arrhythmia, uh, can have stroke. And they are suffering from, if they're not diagnosed, they are five times more at risk for getting strokes. So it's very important in, uh, in uh, saving people's life, saving them from disability, and better yet, saving the uh, health system a lot of money. Also, after people are uh, diagnosed as AFib patient, it's important for the doctor to know what their AFib burden is. So they will know how to treat them with uh, what dosage of uh, medicine, if to go for a process called ablation. So it's actually real time uh, diagnosed by the doctor and real time treatment. Yeah, that's, that's fascinating. So you said that blood pressure, you're not quite ready yet to, uh, you know, you're not quite at FDA standards. 
So when do you think you'll get there and what will you do with, if anything, with blood pressure, your blood pressure technology in the meantime? Okay, uh, blood pressure, we are uh, accurate. Our accuracy is very close to FDA requirements, which is uh, five millimeters of mercury uh, in uh, standard deviation. And uh, we are in systolic uh, measurement, we are very close to being FDA uh, uh, accuracy level. Uh, together with our new watch, the, the upcoming uh, uh, device that should come out next month, we'll have some goodies in the watch that will allow us probably to go into the uh, accuracy level that FDA requires. Uh, and then we will perform clinical trial, white clinical trial for uh, blood pressure measurement. Uh, and the gold standard in this case will be invasive device, uh, blood pressure device that is being used in operations room. And we believe that we will uh, get the F FDA approval by mid next year. Oh, great. Uh, for the whole package? For blood pressure measurement, yes. Really? Okay. For, for uh, heart arrhythmias, for specifically for atrial fibrillation, we should get FDA approval by uh, beginning of next year. Oh, great. So uh, we've got some things to look forward to. Uh, so tell me, what is it that I haven't asked? Uh, I think uh, the, it's very exciting uh, era for all of us. Uh, we're seeing the traditional uh, medical uh, community uh, starting to shake off some dust and uh, uh, looking new, towards new technologies, towards wearable, big data is coming up. Uh, the, the meaning of people being measured for 24-7, uh, the big data gathered from this, it's something uh, we can only uh, suspect uh, that something, some great things will come out of it. No one has collected that much data for just that much uh, long period of time. And I believe we are uh, in for some surprises and uh, better health uh, uh, service for, for all of us on a daily, day-to-day basis. Yeah, so it, it's interesting. You know, when the wearables first came out, there was a big promise for... Uh, you know, for keeping us healthier and watching us and catching diseases early. And what we've gotten so far is a little bit more than step counters. But uh, with what you've got here, it sounds like maybe we are closer than we thought to realizing that reality. Uh, that's, that's true, Mike. Uh, today, I was talking about uh, actually detecting uh, heart arrhythmias and measuring uh, you for blood pressure or hypertension. But uh, we, we think uh, that the, the future, the true future of medical and wearable in specific is actually uh, prevention and not uh, detection after uh, a disease is already there. The prevention is a, is a holy grail. If there are, there are uh, early signs of uh, developing uh, illness or symptoms that can indicate uh, for a person uh, health to deteriorate, then uh, this, this is another story. Okay, perfect. Well, yeah, keep us up to date on how the regulatory process goes. In the meantime, thanks again for joining us. This was great, Aman. And thank, thank you all for listening as well. Bye-bye.